Despite the vision we all seem to have, it still seemed to be just that, only a dream. That was until December the 10th rolled around, and that dream began to take shape as we all gathered at the site with reporters from area newspapers and television stations, along with community leaders, for the official groundbreaking. I'm not really familiar with groundbreaking ceremonies, and uh, maybe uh, Tom Young or Bob could tell us or somebody, but at any rate, uh, I guess this is what they call time to speak. Uh, yeah. And what I like to say at this time, Cy Yoder, it uh, certainly is... Uh, graceful on your part uh, to build a structure of this Michigan Magazine Museum here in uh, uh, Cummins, Michigan. And uh, oh for, for Barry and uh, for I, for the Michigan Magazine Museum, for all the people of this great state of ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, what will uh, you say? We're gonna have a lot of fun building this. And and this will be a real gem for the community. We're gonna make sure of that. And uh, we're happy to have Michigan Magazine participate here and uh, give us a reason to build this building and uh, we're hoping to have a lot of fun, hoping everybody is going to enjoy it. We like all the support we've got here from the community too to oh, here and, and share this exciting moment with us, Dale. Well, indeed. You know, it's been a long time coming, Barry, <laughs> but you know, at, at times driving down the road, we had said at one time after talking to these folks that we've done on our television show for so many years, that one day we might have to build a museum. Here we well, are. lo and behold, did we ever think, we never knew it would be here, but what a <laughs> pleasure it is to be here because there's so many wonderful people here in this community that has been part of Michigan Magazine, right. Right. and we're sharing it with the rest of the state. Yeah, we better do it before the ground freezes up. Ground freezes up. <laughs> well, Cy, let's all put our let's foot, put on, our foot on that. Ready? Yeah. All right, ready? Right? It's a little bit froze, folks, but here we go. You go ahead, Cy. Right, let's take a look at some There you go. All right, let's take it out. Hey. Oh, all right. And I guess the coffee and the donuts. <laughs> there it is. It's a little bit chilly out here, but the coffee and the donuts folks are up there. From that cold winter's day in 1997, construction began in earnest with a vision of the 4th of July grand opening. days remaining before the grand opening, workers kept the pace steady with sanding of the beautiful wooden floors and staining of the high cathedral ceilings. On one particular day, while finishing touches were still being made on the inside, we began moving in some of our show pieces, including the huge eagle constructed by the Chainsaw Men of Michigan. Slowly, the eagle was hoisted by hand and placed in the loft. The seven-foot wingspan barely cleared the high ceilings. 
With the eagle situated in a position, it was firmly bolted down into the loft. But just as workers finished with that project, Rich Pavlik of the Silver Saw arrived with a fine handcrafted showcase he created, which will be placed in the center of the museum. This showcase will house artifacts such as the handcrafted Dell Langen guitar and a four-foot rendition of the freighter Edmund Fitzgerald that was constructed from scratch by modeler Dick McDonald, who will be featured on a future edition of Michigan Magazine. The showcase will feature various other fine collectibles gathered by Dell and myself through our Michigan Magazine journeys. This day also saw the placement of Michigan's first ever historical marker. The marker will be one of the first artifacts visible upon entering the museum. With construction going on inside, volunteers keep last minute preparations going on the outside with landscaping and raking. Here volunteers join in with a type of stone bee where stones are raked up and collected and put into an area where individuals who are interested in stone collecting may view and take home a free rock souvenir of the museum. Oscoda County where the museum is located means Stony Prairie in Native American. And as volunteers soon prove, the name fits very well. Every boulder and stone seen in the landscape and this stone collection was collected and drawn from the five acres a museum sits on. We'd like to again thank all the workers and volunteers, seen and unseen, that have become involved in bringing the museum into reality. Even though we didn't catch all the volunteers in action on camera, their efforts did not go unnoticed. And those people who work diligently behind the scenes, we are especially thankful to. CPA Robert Carpenter and the Robertson Carpenter Accounting Firm. Insurance underwriter Tom Siegler and Kathy Stang of the Kirland Insurance Agency. These people and many others have gone above and beyond to see the Michigan Magazine Museum become reality. Even as we speak, last minute details are being tended to. The location of the museum is in the heart of northeastern Michigan's Oscoda County on M33 just north of Fairview and just south of Cummins. This section of the state is also home to one of the largest Amish communities in the Midwest. Horse and buggies are a common everyday sight along the back roads as well as the main thoroughfares. M33 that passes the museum is also known locally as Abbey Road and is also home to many other family attractions we've featured in past editions of Michigan Magazine. Within only a few miles of the new museum just south of Fairview is the Michigan Asabo Valley Railroad. As you may recall, this was a brainchild of local entrepreneur Howard and Joanne Schrader who created a business from a hobby. Their miniature train travels through the northern Michigan wilderness on weekends and special holidays. Closer to the Michigan Magazine Museum is another museum we featured on the show, the Steiner's Pioneer Museum. Here, the local history is spotlighted with artifacts and special exhibits of days gone by. There's even an authentic log one-room schoolhouse on the grounds. Just north of Michigan Magazine Museum, in the heart of downtown Cummins, is the end of the Lion Caboose Museum. An authentic old-time train caboose is on various occasions open to the public with railroad memorabilia and artifacts of bygone railroad days that put the rural community of Cummins on the map many years ago. Our museum, your museum, will hopefully serve through its constantly changing exhibits as a shining example of all that is good with Michigan and her people, as seen through the eyes and travels of Michigan Magazine Television. Not only a museum of the past, but a living museum of the present and bright future of this Great Lake State. And so you can visit us now at the new Michigan Magazine Museum and follow us where we go each week on Michigan Magazine Television.